How's it going Starseekers, my name's Got Cake, and welcome to this review of Awesome P2, a brutal single hit deaf platformer where you control a rather cool looking P as it majestically spins and flips its way through 25 stages filled with deadly buzzsaw blades, spikes and flying skulls. So if we first begin by taking a look in the settings menu, we get language and audio settings as well as a 4 CRT effect which gives the game's visuals more of a retro appearance by adding fake scan lines. Now I personally found that for some reason this drained my eyes a little, so I turned off the effect after the first couple of levels. After selecting start from the main menu we're presented with the world map. Here we begin on level 0 and are left to work out the game's very simple controls on our own. We can move with either the left analog stick or d-pad and perform a jump by pressing B or A. We're also able to perform a double jump by pressing jump a second time whilst in the air. And trust me you're going to need to master this one mechanic if you want to get through some of the challenges which lie ahead. This first stage also introduces us to a couple of the game's hazards. The first of these are spikes at the bottom of this pit which can be avoided by double jumping over it. And next there's this buzzsaw which moves back and forth across the floor, which we can pass by using these platforms above it to make our way to the exit portal. We then return to the map screen where we can begin the next level. Now each level in the game contains a number of different coins to collect and our current coin count is seen in the top left of the screen. Below this is a timer display how long our current level run has taken. There are also diamonds in some stages which are worth 10 coins and after completing a level we're shown how many coins we collected in it and our completion time. Now as far as I'm aware collecting treasures and fast completion times are purely optional and they're required for some achievements in the PlayStation 4, Xbox One and Steam versions of the game. I did begin by attempting to collect all treasures but gave up about 7 levels in. So as we continue through the stages we encounter some additional hazards that we need to avoid. These include vertical buzzsaws, wall mounted projectile launchers, water, more spikes, even more spikes, spiky ball spikes and skull bats. Difficulty in the game is increased in two different ways. Firstly by increasing the quantity of hazards that you need to navigate through in a level and secondly by increasing the precision required to avoid said hazards. Though they may not seem like it, the first 10 stages or so in the game are relatively tame in comparison to what you face in the latter half of the game. Now everything in a stage is on a global cycle, which starts when you begin a stage and this includes the skull bat spawners. In level 4 you can experience how this can sometimes be an issue, as it's impossible to pass this area unless you run straight from the start and make it through this spike tunnel before the first bat appears. If you're stuck in a situation like this you can hit X to quickly restart the stage and reset global cycles. Now moving quickly through levels can sometimes make things much easier. For example in this level I set up late and encounter two sets of bats at this first section and then another bat halfway down this next section. Restarting the stage and moving straight away allowed me to beat the second bat spawner at the top and the other bat had not yet reached the second section. So levels in the game generally fall into one of two categories. The first are faster paced levels which require you to move quickly through them to avoid hazards such as this one featuring shitloads of projectile launchers and the second are slower levels requiring much more precise jumping and movement. These levels tend to feature a larger quantity of spikes and smaller platforms. Now to me the faster paced levels generally tended to be much easier as many of the later levels required a ridiculous amount of precision to overcome some obstacles. Usually this comes down to incredibly precise timing with your jumps and double jumps or moving your pee in a specific way. There were certain parts of levels that I was stuck on for a long time and I must have died at least 50 times before finally getting through them. Now there are no checkpoints in levels and it can become incredibly tedious if you encounter these sections towards the end of a level as dying means beginning from the start of the level and having to work your way through the whole level again. You'll often end up mastering the first sections in some levels almost becoming able to speed run your way through them due to the amount of times you'll have repeated them. In general level design in the game is pretty good and while there's not much variety to the game's hazards what little there is is put to good effect and definitely provides a challenge. I did however encounter a couple of levels which reused hazard layouts with only slight changes to them and I would have preferred them to have made normal and hard versions of levels if they were going to do this. Now working through levels is generally a process of trial and error or as I like to call it die and repeat. The route through many sections is usually not apparent right away and you'll have to die trying several different approaches before you work out the right solution. 
so I managed to keep my shit together long enough to complete 18 of the game's 25 levels before calling it a day, which is actually quite good for me considering my track record of rage quitting before I've even seen a quarter of most of these types of games. So what can I say about my gameplay experience of Awesome P2? Well generally it was pretty enjoyable, there were many frustrating times where I had to take a break before I smashed my face into my monitor, but if I'm honest I didn't find my blood boiling as much with this game. My main issue was with having to repeat the same first section of levels over and over due to me hitting a roadblock on some of the game's longer levels. I also felt the precision required at certain points in the game was sometimes taken to the extreme. For example here where you have to double jump beneath this bat as it passes over you just before you hit the water. My only other criticisms are firstly with the game's jumping, which was sometimes not responsive if you try to jump from a platform at the last moment, and secondly with the lack of variety to hazards. There are only really 5 of them in the game and it would have been nice to see a bit more creativeness as opposed to just seeing the standard spikes and saws found in plenty of other similar games. So now we come to rating the game. Now I rate games between 1 and 5 stars, with the shovelware stamp of approval reserved for the worst games on the eShop. This rating is based on my own personal opinion on what a game has to offer in terms of gameplay and value for money to potential buyers. And for a rating I'd give Awesome P2. 3 out of 5 stars. If you played the first one and enjoyed it, or generally just like these type of games, you'll probably have fun playing Awesome P2. Gameplay is kept simple, and while its 25 levels are pretty linear in design, they offer a decent challenge which may push some people's patience to the limit. The game releases on the 3rd of June and you can pre-order it with a 20% discount on the UK Switch eStore for £3.59, or on the US eStore for $3.99. Alternatively, the game is already out on Steam and it's set to release on Xbox One and PlayStation 4. And that's it for this review of Awesome P2. If you enjoyed the review, drop it a like and let me know what you thought of it and the game in the comments section below. And as always, consider subscribing to the channel for future Switch indie game reviews. For now though, I just want to thank you all once again for watching and until next time, game on.